Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today at the Foothills Church in Gilroy, California. For wherever you're watching, uh, or however you're watching, thank you for joining us today. And we got a message today on God's Word. God's Word is first. It's above all, right? And He is the author of it. And we need to reverence His Word, read His Word, and then apply His Word to our life. And so we're going to talk today about God's Word and its importance to us. Would you bow your heads and let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you today for your word, your word that is eternal. That what you've said to us, your thoughts and your ideas revolutionize our lives. When we, when we listen to you, you hear what you say. I love what Paul said in Romans chapter 10 where he says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we read your word, when we hear your word, as we listen to your word, God, it just causes our faith in you to grow, which enhances our relationship. Because relationships without trust and faith, they, they just don't work. We want our relationship with you to work. So Lord, I pray today that you would anoint the word. And you have anointed your word, but you would anoint the words that I say, and that you would anoint our ears to hear what your spirit has to say to us, your church. In the name of Jesus, amen. So we're, we're doing a thing right now at the church, just real quick. Um, at three o'clock, we are stopping what we're doing in our day, and we're having a word of prayer. We're praying for the return of our building. We're praying for the return of our assets, and we're, we're praying for the return of our finances that Foursquare took. We are also praying that our attorneys would have wisdom and insight on, on what to do and how to do it well. We're praying for our continued growth. We're praying for you, uh, our online church that has just been growing. And we want to thank you again for joining and being part of our online community. So at 3 o'clock, we are, we are praying. And th this morning, I read in Acts chapter 3, Peter and, and, uh, and John were going to the um, uh, temple to pray, and it was about three in the afternoon, it says. And so at three in the afternoon. Now, if you forget and pray at six o'clock, well, that's good too. It's not about the time, it's about that we pray. Th that's what's important, that we take time in the middle of our day to stop and pray to the Lord, thank Him for all His goodness. And so with that, let's, let's talk about God's Word. God's Word is first. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 says this, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. God's words to be upon our hearts. And then Moses wrote, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home. So God's word is important. Your first language, for whatever country you live in, your first language is called your mother tongue. That's what you learned from your mother and your father. And over time, you eventually became fluent speaking it with ease. You didn't even go to school, and you learned how to, to communicate in your language, your mother tongue. But what if we were to learn another language, the God language? What's the God language? The God language is spoken by people who pray. They give praise to God. An example, when good fortune happens to some people, they say, I was lucky, or the stars aligned. But when you know the God language, you say, God blessed me. You give credit to God. That's learning the God language, where God is on your tongue. God is on your thoughts and your, and your mind. People who speak the God language naturally read His Word and then speak it over their lives. I, I confess God's Word over my life and over the issues of my life on many occasions. Some of you may know this scripture in Philippians chapter 4 that says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And you may have spoken that over your life when you were going through a difficult time and needed the strength of the Lord. That's part of learning the God language. Oh, and they also go to church because it's at church where we learn a lot of God speak, God language. And I want to tell you right now, you're going to church this very moment, wherever you're at, you are at church because two or more gathered together to honor Jesus Christ and to hear his word. And that's church. So you're having church right now. And I want to thank you for going to church because it's at church. One of the ways that we learn the God language. Now, people who learn to speak the God language grow up with this sense of ease with God. 
The longer I serve the Lord, the more I read his word, the more I speak his word over my life, the more at ease I am with him. And I begin to develop a fluency and a faith that the word of God is above all. You know, the scripture that I mentioned in prayer, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you learn the Word of God, you start to develop this fluency with the Word of God, and your faith grows. That's the whole point. And God's Word is above all. Listen to what David wrote in Psalms chapter 138, verse 2. This is one of my life verses. A life verse is a verse that has impacted you. This verse has impacted my life like few others in the Bible. David wrote, you have exalted above all things your name and your word. This is what our church is all about. The Foothills Church of Gilroy and our online church where you're at right now. We want to do two things above all. Exalt his word and exalt his name. We worship the name of Jesus and we speak the word of God. We read the word of God. And with that, I want to encourage you to read your word every day. The whole point of of the God language The kingdom, the language of the kingdom is his word. And and my desire in preaching this message is that you would have a new found desire and hunger to read his word and to apply his word to your life. Now, most of us have heard this idiom, a person is only as good as their word. That's so true and could certainly most definitely be said of Jesus. His name and his word are synonymous. In fact, John wrote in John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word. John called Jesus the Word, the communication of God to man. We talked about communication last week. Communication brings communion. Communion brings community. Jesus came so that we could commune with God and be a part of his community. Belonging to the community of God. All because of Jesus, the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We believe that Jesus Christ is God. And when He walked on earth, He was fully man and fully God. His name and His Word are one and the same. That's who He is. He is as good as His Word. And we can trust him. See, what what this means for us today is this, that all God says in the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is exactly who he is. And that we can completely and fully trust him because he says so. He tells us he's faithful. He tells us he's gracious. He tells us he's good. He tells us he's loving. He's merciful. He's forgiving. He's kind. And we can believe that. This is why, for me, all of the Bible is reliable. And above every philosophy, idea, thought, and belief that mankind has come up with throughout the ages, I hold the Word of God higher than any other word, idea, philosophy, uh, belief that mankind has. If God says it, I believe it. And the Word of God, I believe, is inspired by Him. Now, for some, the Bible... The words in the Bible may not always compute in our earth-based brains. How could that have happened? Miracles, for example. Some people say, well, I don't believe that. And they say, it it doesn't make sense. It's irrational or it's illogical. But I would offer up this. God's word transcends our human rationale. God's word transcends our human logic. It's not illogical, it's translogical. It's not irrational, it's transrational. So God's word is above all, and I'll tell you this, he is the author of it, making it truth. Truth. 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21. Listen to what Peter wrote. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by a prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy, the Word of God, never had its origin in the will of man. But men spoke from God. That's important. Men spoke from God 
as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit, who is God as well. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit wrote the Word of God for us. Men, it was like getting downloads from God, and then they wrote them and they became the Word of God. Reliable, trustworthy truth. The Bible may have been penned by people, but it was inspired by God. They're His words to us, written by man, only written by man, transcribed by man, but authored by God. He's the author of the word, making him, get this now, author, making him the sole authority of truth. He's the author and the authority on what is true. When we believe him, we are on the side of truth. And that's what Jesus said to Pilate. Everyone who listens to me is on the side of truth. That's what he said to Pontius Pilate moments before being beaten and crucified. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. This is why God's word is above our thoughts and our quote-unquote wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom in the world right now. A lot of people saying this and that, and we should do this and do that. If it doesn't align with God's word, it doesn't come from God. And if it doesn't come from God, it's not wisdom. It's what James calls in James chapter 3, earthly wisdom. I don't want earthly wisdom. I want godly wisdom. James 1, 5 said, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men generously, without finding fault. If you want godly wisdom, you got to go to the source, the authority, the author of the Word of God. He's the authority and the only reliable source of truth for your life. That's why his word is above all, because he's the author. And he is above all. The only reliable source of truth. But there is one thing that's left out of the Bible that really angers a lot of people. Here's the one thing that was left out of the Bible that angers a lot of people. Their opinions. God doesn't need our opinions because He's the authority. And we yield to His Word. And that's the the first or the foundational step to growing in the Lord, to growing in your faith, is recognizing that God's Word is above all and that He is the authority, the author of of, of the Word. And we begin to believe and put our trust in that. I'm going to conclude with this scripture from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. By understanding, we could say your own philosophies, your own ideas, your own thoughts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Will you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, I pray right now for everyone that's watching and listening that they would have an increased hunger and desire for your word that's, not like, that's like nothing else on earth. Your word transcends humanity. Your words and your ways are higher than the heavens are above the earth. So your ways and your thoughts are above our ways. And I want to yield to your word. And I pray that everyone in this, uh, that's watching today that's at church, would hunger and thirst for righteousness and have a stronger desire for your precious word that we believe is inspired by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of today's message. And thanks for coming to church today. Have a blessed day.